Welcome back to another edition of Force Friday, where we talk about Star Wars theories, characters, concepts, comparisons, analyzations, collectibles, and more. And today we're going to do our wish list for the Black Series Rogue One figures. And when I say Black Series, what I really mean, once again, is just 112 scale figures. I don't care if SH Figuarts does them or a Bandai model kit. Hopefully only the model kit if it really makes sense. Or Mafex or anybody else. I just say Black Series because it's a standard. And then in a year or so, we'll come back, look at the list, see if anything needs up updating and update accordingly. It's a fun little exercise. We've made our way through the prequels, Solo, and now we're tackling Rogue One, one of my personal favorite Star Wars movies of all time. So let's start at number 10. My number 10 choice is Mon Mothma. This is for a number of reasons. For one, I think she's a cool character. For two, we don't have any representation of her in the 112 scale at all. And the nice thing about this one is her look here isn't too far from her look in the prequels. So you could probably buy two if need be for different shelves or at least do some slight modding in order to make it work for both representations perhaps even for the original trilogy as well. She's a character that plays a key role in the Republic as well as the Rebels, but she's not the most exciting of characters in terms of design, so the idea that we may never get one I think is a plausible one. So that's why she's making the list, because you'll be able to use her in a number of ways, I think, and because she's a pivotal character that I think the chances of actually getting might be slimmer than we think. My number nine is Admiral Raddus. I'm generally down for any Mon Cal characters, and it's a bummer that we haven't gotten a proper original trilogy Admiral Akbar, because I know most of us would jump on that. Some of the customs I've seen out there are beautiful, but an official release would be nice. That being said, Admiral Raddus plays a pretty pivotal role in the attack on Scarif, basically leading the rebels in terms of their reinforcements to our actual rogues. He's an interesting character in terms of design. He looks cool. He looks unique. He's going to spice up the shelf. So all in all, I think he's a logical choice, and I think he's a popular choice. I think most people enjoyed his presence in that film and like him as a character, even though it was a small role, but it's kind one of those traditional Star Wars small roles that people often gravitate towards. My number eight choice is Corporal Tonk. Rogue One is one of my favorite Star Wars films, as I just mentioned, because mainly there's so many different crews. And if you know me and you know my affinity towards Star Wars, you know I like a strong crew. That being said, only one of the crews has even really been touched upon in any meaningful matter in the 112 scale. Corporal Tonk represents a character from the rebels that joined the rogues in the attack on Scarif, which is another crew that I think that we should flesh out. Because you don't get a whole lot of time with a lot of these extra characters, it kind of becomes about what you're trying to build in regard to aesthetics. The fact that he's a human, looks like a soldier that's seen some combat, and had a few close-up on-screen moments draws some connectivity between the fandom, I'd hope, and the character on the screen. So when building out that crew of rebels on Scarif, I think he would be an integral part of that team. Now we'll stay right in that pocket for a moment with Bistan. Once again, part of that crew of rebels that we don't really get a whole lot of time with, but because of his unique character design, made an impact in a memorable sequence on film that once again makes his character stand out from amongst a lot of B-list, C-list, background, extra supporting character roles. Certain things like, of course, his visual design, but also changes in height, proportions, etc., is going to flesh out that crew of Scarif Rebels in a way that makes them visually interesting to take in. But Rogue One, in a number of ways, similar to A New Hope for me, stands out because of the amount of characters you don't get a whole lot of time with, but make a big impression. An instant example I think about is the hammerhead at the cantina scene. You don't really know anything about him, but you walk away like, who's that guy? What's his story? And I kind of feel that same way about Bistan. My number six choice begins our journey down the path of Saul's militia, which we got zero figures from in the 112 scale. We got a few in the three and three quarter, but zero in the six inch. Moroff, I think, is one of those characters, once again, that stood out. According to the visual dictionary, he seeks out combat zones across the galaxy, selling his firepower to anyone who might need it, not interested in the details of the conflict between the Empire and the Rebels, the mighty Jigoran mercenary figures there's money to be made for a towering gunner of great strength. He's found like-minded company in Guerrero's group and is part of the patrol that brings Bodhi Rook before Saul for questioning. I also think there's a character similar to him in Solo, or perhaps it was a Mandalorian. I can't remember, but I want to say that they reused the costume at some point. So therefore, like I've stated before in previous examples, it gives you the flexibility to buy one figure and use it multiple times, fleshing out different ranks and different background characters for your shelves. He's a cool character, and I would like to build Saul's crew. And when you think of Saul's crew, I think he's one of the standouts. Perhaps not the biggest standout, but we'll get back to that later. But let's stay with Saul's militia for a minute. My next choice, would be Weetief Sayubi. Not really sure, but the visual dictionary says kilo for kilo, 
he is one of the most destructive members of Saul's band of rebels. He can hide easily among the taller beings that congregate in the holy city. A sharpshooter, he specializes in explosives. He also custom builds sticky bombs used by insurrectionists against the imperial patrols of the ATST walkers and tanks. And I think he may have been played by Warwick Davis, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But like I said, standout character, memorable, has that moment with the explosives. So it does have an on-screen importance and an on-screen moment that captures the imagination of audiences as well as a younger generation, we hope. But at the very least, makes him memorable in some regard in comparison to the rest of Saw's crew. And like I also stated before, variety in size, variety in height, weight, proportions, etc., as well as visual aesthetics in terms of alien species is always going to make the shelf look more interesting than a bunch of six-foot human characters at the end of the day. And now at this point, we start to get out of the background characters and into the focal point characters that we never saw a representation of, which is honestly quite disappointing. But we'll start this journey with our number four choice, Galen Erso. Galen Erso plays a huge plot point in this movie, in fact, covering both the first, second, and third acts, both in terms of Jen's motivations and in terms of the actual MacGuffin of the film. He is the tie that binds Jen to Saul. He is the tie that binds Jen to the Empire. He is the tie that ultimately leads to Jen and the Rebels. He's a very pivotal character, and in fact, the whole movie falls apart without his presence. So in a figure line where we pretty much got Jen's crew, as well as Krennic and some troopers, he'd be a really nice addition to that line as a kind of go-between or bridge between the two connections. Also, with the advancements that Hasbro has been making both in their sculpting and in their digital face application, this would be a human character that I think would be quite worthwhile doing. Now, my number three choice is Two Tubes, and I'm sure that you guys thought he'd be my number one. And in terms of what my heart wants, he's probably my number one. But he doesn't quite deserve to be the number one. But I do feel like he has a cult following. Perhaps not as strong as Darth Maul or Boba Fett. But whatever the tail end is of that conversation, I think he's in that conversation. Which to me is enough to elevate him up to the higher ranks of this list. Now when I say two twos, I'm actually referring to both him and his brother. So in fact, I suppose you could say two two tubes. But they are in fact brothers and are mercenaries that have signed up with Saul Guerrero's rebels and operate out of Jeddah. They share the bluntly descriptive moniker of two tubes for the breathing apparatuses that followed them to operate in human standard atmospheres. Their native world was conquered and occupied by the empire, forcing them to flee as refugees. With the desire to strike back at the empire, they have no reservations about Guerrero's violent methods. Now, we also know that one of them was part of the Emphis Nest crew. So once again, you could buy one, you could buy the second one, and then you could buy one of them twice for the other shelf. Common trend that we see in Hasbro in terms of getting the biggest bang for their buck, also the biggest bang for our collection. And the reoccurring theme here, a variety of looks, shape, size, aesthetic, plays a big part. He's one of the coolest looking characters, in my opinion, that has been developed for the saga, not just in the recent Disney years, but perhaps ever. And the only representation that we've ever got is a three and three quarter, and it's just plain sad. So let's go ahead and get to the crescendo of that element, which is Saul Guerrero himself. Saul Guerrero, a character that is not only in the Clone Wars, but he's also in Rogue One. He's also in Rebels. He greatly redefines the way that we see the rebellion in regards to his methods and tactics of being this fundamental extremist. I've already done a whole video about him because I think he's a, one of the most fascinating characters that have come out of Star Wars in the past 10 years. But not only is he represented in so much media, he's also a tie that binds the different eras, which inherently makes him important, in my opinion. Played by the great Forrest Whitaker, he's known as an extremist, a madman, and terrorist, both by sworn enemies and reluctant allies alike. Such slurs mean nothing to Saw. He has been waging war against the Empire since the very start of its reign. Saw has lost so much in his fight that fighting is all he knows and has left. I also think that they could supply a different head sculpt so that you could get the bald version or the kind of wildly unkept version, and many collectors would appreciate it. He is the leader of that crew of which we have no representations, but in order to build a crew, you need someone to build it around, and he is that focal point. So I think that he opens up the floodgates, especially if he does well, for the opportunity to create more figures within that crew, a crew that I think is very cool looking, rugged, and interesting. I'm truly, honestly surprised, befuddled, you might even say, that they never made one. It seems like such a no-brainer. All of the kind of tech and stuff, like off of his body, and his armor, rather, and the breathing apparatus, and all that kind of stuff, is just a cool design, along with the mechanical leg and so forth. Like, I just think it's something that would appeal to a lot of people. And he plays such a big role in the first act of the film that it was really shocking to me that we never got any representation, once again, aside from the three and three quarter. Now, with Marvel Legends, people think, or perhaps it's not even that people think, it might even be common knowledge, but at the very least, rumor that they tested their three and three quarter line to see what would be popular for their six inch. That could be true for Star 
Star Wars, but I don't feel like they're doing it the same way. But that being said, even if they were, Saw Gerrera was only available with two tubes in a four pack that was ultimately more expensive than most people wanted to pay, especially for the other two figures, which weren't as important, that I hope Hasbro didn't miss the forest from the trees and cross my fingers that one day we will get this figure. But until then, he's number two on my list. Which brings us to number one. Now, I know, like I said before, two tubes is really the one I want for number one. But I have to be fair. Plus, I have a custom two tubes that my buddy Gort made me, co-host of Force Sensitive. And that being said, the Black Series provided us with a Jin, Cassian, a K2SO, a Chirrut and Baze, and an additional Jin and Cassian, which is almost the whole crew. Emphasis on almost. The one character that they overlooked was Bodhi Rook. The character that really gets the ball going plot-wise, character that plays an integral part, a character that pays the sacrifice like the rest of the team, and a character that unfortunately they made in that Disney diecast version that looks like somebody's nightmare. But this crew will never be complete until we get a Bodhi on our shelves. It'll always be one member short, and the rogues don't strike me as anyone that would leave one man behind. This has to be the number one on the list because it's the most obvious glaring hole. We don't have any of Saul's crew, but because we don't have any, it doesn't seem as much as an oversight. Because we have all but one of Jen's crew, huge oversight. It's downright distracting. I'm pretty proud of the diorama that I did for my Rogue One shelf. It's probably one of my favorites. And I say that humbly because if you know me, you know I'm pretty critical of all my stuff. But that being said, I even have a hard time looking at it because I know it's missing that one thing. It's like ordering a pizza and one of the toppings isn't on there or something. Like, it's just glaring to me. I can't oversee it. We did get a three and three quarter version of 5 POA that was decent, but our collection in regards to Rogue One has no hopes of ever being complete in any regard without the addition of this character. So he is my number one. And with that, the next time that we revisit this topic will be A New Hope. Make sure you're washing your hands. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.